Hello, and welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. I'm Dave. And with me in the studio, I'm, I'm happy to be joined with Jesse Moose, who is construction liaison for the city of Somerville. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you for having me. As well as Dan Amelin, who is the engineering project manager for the city. Welcome to you. Thank you very much for having us. And we're here primarily to talk about the construction in Union Square. And uh, for those of us that live here, we've seen many the very many like phases of this particular phase of the project, phases within phases. <laughs> and uh, so we've seen a lot of progress. Um, Dan, why don't we start with you? So what exactly has been installed uh, underground? What's going on there? Sure, so uh, quick background, this project started April 2018. Uh, so we're just over a year into uh, this, this project. It's a three year project. Uh, so uh, cumulatively since then, uh, a lot has been installed and, and completed, mm. um, even though many people uh, drive through here every day may not know that. Uh, but we've actually installed uh, roughly 3,000 feet of new water main, uh, 2,000 feet of new sewer line. Uh, we've heavy cleaned, uh, which, which involves manned entry into our sewers, uh, almost three and a half miles of sewers. Mm. Uh, Subsequently, once the sewers were cleaned, we lined them all with an interior liner, uh, again, three and a half miles worth, uh, installed about 500 feet of new gas main. And uh, as of recently, with, with the recent progress we have here, uh, just over the past few months, uh, we've installed just about 500 feet of our new box culvert, which is uh, kind of the overall focus of, of this whole project. So, uh, you know, that's just within this past year. So we still have you know, roughly a year and a half, almost two years to go. And that's primarily in the Union Square area? Yes, correct. Yep. Uh, so the, the overall project limits, um, it is the Somerville Ave streetscape mm -hmm. uh, and utility project. So our limits extend from the corner of uh, Webster and Washington all the way down to McGrath Highway. Uh, so from, from what you've seen and, and many folks in the area have seen is a lot of the work we've done uh, in bulk has been in Union Square. But as you proceed east down towards McGrath, you've seen other work zones set up uh, sure. for a lot of this other work. Um, I think the, you know, the, the most pressing in, in magnitude was uh, trolley track removal, which uh, you know historically there was old horse trolleys in, in Union Square and down Somerville mm -hmm. Ave, and uh, you know we uncovered that when we started doing road work, and you know unfortunately conflicts with our goal of putting this box culvert in, so we had to remove about one and a half miles worth of, of old trolley tracks. Was that a surprise, or were you expecting to, to, to find those? <laughs> Jesse laughs because, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it, we have historical records, uh, and, and there was knowledge that it was in the area. Um, we just didn't know it would, it would be as much as, as we've uncovered and removed. Huh. Um, so it's, it's been quite a journey in that sense and you know, actually really kind of understanding the history of, of this area, you yeah. know, dating back 200 years ago um, and, and seeing you know, how we built roads on top of the infrastructure then. Instead of removing it then, which would have saved us a lot of time now. <laughs> right, right. So you have to work to remove those now. Yes. So, yep. Interesting. So we've seen the construction areas shift up and down Washington Street. Uh, as you mentioned, can you tell us uh, what's going to be installed in the next few weeks and where and when you're going to be moving next? Yeah, absolutely. So currently uh, we're, we're working on some of the lab, almost, uh, let's say, in front, of, in front of this building, SMC, <laughs> and the plaza. Um, the reason we're here right now, it wasn't originally intended to be at this location at this time. Uh, however, you know, as we finished up our work in Union Square just over the past few months and, and we've opened up some traffic lanes. Uh, ideally we would have been moving just adjacent to it, uh, east in front of Stone Ave. Unfortunately we have third party utility conflicts, there's uh, electrical duct banks that are in the way uh, that still need to be moved. But in order to keep this project going and, and not delay it or drag it out longer than three years, uh, we actually jumped ahead and now we're working our way back towards Union Square. Um, the current work zone we have, it's approximately a three month duration. Uh, we're just about at a month now and uh, they're actually making better progress than, than we all had originally expected. Uh, so uh, 
in the general sense, you know, in talking with our contractor and looking at schedule updates, uh, this work zone we you know we anticipate being wrapped up, uh, hopefully mid to late August. Okay. Um, some of the work, obviously, it, it, with, with it being such an impactful work zone, yeah. uh, the bulk of the work here at this location is, is all our box culvert, which is uh, 14 feet wide, 6 feet tall, hmm. and, and we need a crane to install it because each section is so heavy. Um, given the logistical challenges of trying to excavate and almost 20 feet down, install these around other existing utilities in the ground, hmm. uh, you know, we're lucky to get maybe 30, 40 feet a day. Uh, originally, it was about 10 feet, but uh, given our, our contractor's you know, overall attitude and, and wanting to get this job going and done, uh, they've actually kind of stepped up their, their progress and, and are moving faster than we had all originally thought. Uh, that being said, our next work zone is actually going to be, uh, we'll be shifting over to the west directly in front of the plaza. Uh, access to Stone Ave, that, that's that other missing work zone in between Union and where we're going to move next. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect to probably get to Stone Ave sometime in, in mid-fall, uh, late fall, uh, as you know, this, this next work zone in front of the plaza, we'd expect you know, another three months. Um, just, you know, despite the, the rapid progress we've seen in this current work zone, you know, it, there could be a whole host of variables underground that we don't know yet, right. uh, just because we haven't gotten there. So More tracks? You never know. Actually, it could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, just in our current work zone, we, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of old railroad ties. Hmm. Um, oddly enough, they're just in, in this particular stage, there's no tracks, which is odd. But, uh, you know, perfect example of, of things you uncover that yeah. you aren't expecting that, yeah. you know, that could potentially delay the work, you know, a week, a day, so on and so forth. And what about the impact of this work on uh, traffic and public transit? So the impacts with, with our current work zone, and, and they're actually going to be the same impacts with our next work zone mm -hmm. um, coming up you know, in the next month and a half, two months or so. Um, we actually occupy the two eastbound lanes for the work zone. Uh, our box culvert goes under those two lanes. Uh, but logistically, you know, the question we all asked was, how do you remove all that material in such a confined space? where your only option is to, once you start digging, you can only move backwards. Uh, so when this project was in design, it was determined you know, during the daytime and, and working hours, uh, the contractor can actually occupy a third lane, uh, which does result in you know, major impacts to traffic. Mm. What we determined was you know, we always want to maintain uh, access from the public safety building in either direction. Uh, so the one lane of traffic we do have open is only between 6.30 a.m., 4 o'clock p.m., eastbound, just to accommodate any emergency vehicles that may need to travel points west. Uh, with that being said, we have one lane of eastbound traffic. Uh, we're asking motorists, bicyclists, uh, to actually detour down Webster, southbound, make a left-hand turn, or if you're coming northbound on Webster, make a right-hand turn onto Prospect Street, and then continue to your destination uh, with that short reroute. Uh, Ultimately, in terms of public transit, what that means is, uh, you know, we had one bus stop for four different services mm -hmm. uh, opposite the plaza, and that bus stop we couldn't keep open. Reason being, all these you know different bus routes all travel westbound. So we actually have a map. It's uh, posted on our website, and uh, it'll be available, you know, for anyone who's interested. Uh, it actually shows the four different routes preceding the Webster to Prospect detour. Uh, what we ended up doing with, with this bus stop opposite the plaza is relocating it to an existing stop on Prospect. Okay. So that you know, there, there's no reduction in the number of stops. It's a, the closest one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good thing about Prospect Street in this particular you know, relocation is that there's a dedicated bus lane on that road. And that means you know, that, that reduces the, the delay times or, or run times rather for each individual route. Uh, the four routes that are affected, I believe, are the 85 outbound, 86 outbound, 91 outbound, and the 87 inbound. So, okay. you know, this, this one stop serves, you know, 500 plus people every day, and it's, uh, you know, luckily it, it's only it's one bus stop that we had to relocate for right. that many people. Right. 
And uh, you know, th this has been going on now for a little over a week, and uh, so far, so good. Yeah, uh, good. I think uh, you know we take public safety extremely seriously, and, and that's always our first priority. And um, you know, it's in reaching out to, to some residents and, and constituents who use those you know but different bus routes, so far you know no problem. So we aim to keep it that way. And speaking of residents and community feedback, you know what has been that feedback? You know, it's been an interesting year. You know, we basically put a giant hole in the middle of a business district. Right. Um, but before we did that, we did a lot of outreach. We explained what we're doing, why we're doing. Everyone knows the Union Square has a history of flooding. And explaining why we're doing this kind of helped the impact once we started. Um, I spend hours down here a week talking to businesses, talking to residents. I go to Union Square Main Street meetings, talk to Nina, the Arts Council, making sure that we aren't affecting events. Um, we want to communicate this as much as possible. And thank you to you for having us so we have another you know, available outlet here through SMC. Um, but I would say residents have understood. You know, No one wants to have a lot of construction going on in the neighborhood, but yeah. they understand the, the rationale for it. Good. So you have, you have a 10? <laughs> <laughs> and what about businesses? So, you know, businesses, I think, have the same, you know, issue dealing with it, because it's also, how do you get customers here for, you know, tearing up the roads? Um, and we're doing, you know, a lot of outreach for that. We have our loyal to local campaign. But there are businesses that are opening while we're through construction that are doing very well. Mm -hmm. So like Vinyl Bakery has just opened. Elliot House, which is a dog grooming place, I believe. Uh, TMB Pizza, which is Broadwind's new pizza place, Masala right. Square, uh, the Jungle Community Center. So there are businesses that, while this construction is happening, they are opening and they seem to be able to do well. And I've spoken to a lot of them before they opened, making sure they were aware of what they're, you know, getting into. Yeah. Um, but you know, once again, if you keep it loyal to local and support Union Square businesses, we'll all be happy. Great. Great. And so uh, what about the city providing updates on the construction? So there are multiple ways. We have a construction newsletter that is put together by our construction public information officer, Eric Mace, that goes out every Friday. Mm -hmm. You can sign up for that by emailing construction at somervillema.gov. That's also if you ever want to get in touch with the project team or part of the communications team. It's kind of a catch-all email for us, and then we kind of triage it to whichever department has to deal with this certain issue. Uh, so it's construction at somervillema.gov. You can email us any questions. It goes to myself and Dan as well as others. Uh, we also have a public meeting coming up. Uh, it's going to be next Thursday, the 18th, starting at 6 p.m. at the Public Safety Building, so a police station, uh, 220 Washington Street. Myself and Dan will be there. And we'll be essentially presenting the same information, just a little bit more in depth. Uh, you know, we, we would hope and expect a, you know, a large crowd to show up. Uh, we're here, we want to provide the information and, and keep people informed and you know, potentially uh, avoid any sort of impacts to, to residents. It, big, massive projects, impactful, we know, but sure. you know, whatever we can do to try to mitigate that and, and really try to improve you know, people's livelihood in the area while this project's going on is, mm -hmm. is one of our goals for that meeting. Yeah. So. I mean, I would definitely say this is definitely a community-focused project. You know, we're doing this construction for a reason, but if we can also focus on the impacts of the community while we're doing it and try and mitigate if Dan says it, I think we're all going to have a better time. Sounds good. All right, well, thank you very much, Jesse Moose and Dan Amelin, for, for yeah. coming on and giving an update about Union Square construction. Uh, we look forward to seeing where it goes for the rest of the summer and how it progresses, and I'm sure at that point we'll have you back in to talk some more about this. Excellent. Love to be here. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Dave.
Thank <laughs> you.